Hello again. Um, another pair of Dittons, this time a pair of 551s that a lovely chap called um, Pete brought over a couple of weeks ago. Um, and yeah, it's now time to tear these down and, and have a look at them. Um, basically, I'm going to be uh, rebuilding the crossovers on these, changing the wiring um, and just giving the drivers the once over. Um, treating the rubber suspension, just testing everything, make sure it's okay. We had a conversation about um, deleting the mid-range and tweeter trims, L pads that are in here. But if i um, if I delete those, then I will have to set the frequency response in stone. Um, I've measured them. I'll put the measurements up now so you can have a good look at them. So as you can see, they measure pretty well. They've got a, a nice dipped um, kind of response, which I like. Stops them being shouty. So I could delete these and maintain that um, because clearly Peter listens to these in the zero position. So no gain, no um, attenuation. But I think it's a good thing to have there. Yes, it's another thing in the signal path, um, but it's a character of these speakers it's it's part of them so if i remove that you know i can put a blank plate in there or leave these in but it if they're going to stay there <clears throat> sorry about that had a delivery um yeah if they're going to stay there then they might as well be functional like i say they're a, a character of these speakers and it's not a bad thing to have it helps you um kind of eq them a bit to your preferences and probably help them settle into the room you're using them in a bit better but um yeah so the initial measurements um are pretty good the frequency response is good um horizontal measurements good uh, they perform pretty well spectral decay not bad there is ring in there um that might be old components it just might be the drivers being older and more lazy than modern drivers um distortion really clean so um, vertical, uh, if you go above, there is a bit of a dip at the crossover point between these two. Um, if you listen below the tweeter, I think the response is better to me. So I would prefer to have probably listen more on mid level than uh, or mid axis than than tweeter. But uh, yeah, so we've got uh, the HF two thousand and one. So kind of the later version of the HF two thousand. Um, which is a good tweeter, but it's very fragile and it has a little fuse that protects it. Um, yeah, they're, they're pretty good. And then we have a dome mid-range. It's got this enormous chassis. Um, the meshes come unstuck on this, um, but it's only a little two inch dome. So we need to clean this up, um, probably respray this and then fix that back on. I mean, it's, there's obviously a big magnet there because that's pulling in uh, a 10 inch paper cone woofer and a port um, looking at the measurements i would suggest this port's tuned to about 40 hertz um, these have great bass performance um, looking at the near field measurements i think about 40 db is the 3 db down point um, and just running the signal generator you know at 30 hertz they've still got great output um, so yeah, they're uh, a big beefy speaker. Um, so uh, yeah, the cabinets are in good condition. I'll bring you in a bit closer so you can. Yeah, so the cabinets are in good condition. Um, they're chipboard, veneered. Um, 
I had a pair of 332s in last year, same style with this um, strip all the way around, but uh, they're in good cosmetic condition. I haven't got the grills or the covers, um, Peter's got those, I think he's going to recloth them himself. Um, so yeah, I'll leave that to him. Um, but the brown finish on the front is kind of a rubber and it's breaking down. It's really sticky and I don't want to, but if you push on it, you'll smear it. Um, this one isn't too bad. The other one is worse. Um, also, the other one's got quite a few chips and nicks in it, but I don't know if that really bothers Peter because he has the covers on. Um, I might suggest to him it might be something he wants to do, but to flatten this all back and then give it a coat of satin black or something like that. Um, but really, I think for for me, I'm in this to get them sounding at their best. So rebuilding the crossover, new wiring, um, which will be new wiring to this as well. Um, give the drivers a test and a service, um, but they're in really good condition. So yeah, we'll take this one apart and uh, have a look inside. Right, let's take a look. One thing I don't like about these, and I found it with the 332s, pair of 442s I've had, is how stuck in the drivers are. Um, you always end up pulling the chipboard and either, I think it's the gasket material breaks down and just uh, sort of glues itself in. So there's our, our woofer, nice big treated paper, uh, sorry, paper cone, big magnet, yeah, um, aluminium chassis. Nice. So all the screws are um, screwing into inserts inside. So nice steel screws. No wood screws. Right. Right, that's our mid-range driver. Look at the size of the magnet on that. That's a monster. That is a monster of a mid. Huge magnet. So push fit connections. Yeah, not particularly tight. So we want to delete those. There's our mid. Huge great thing. Um, I had a guy contact me because he's got a pair of these that have failed. Um, I haven't seen them second hand. Um, I don't know whether there's a rebuild kit for them. But uh, yeah, that's a, that's a monster. Right, this tweet has been out before. Um, so we've got these machine screws, should be three of them. We've got two of them and then a Torx bit. And I can see on the grill cover that it's being glued back on and it's a bit loose. So we're gonna have to refix that. A bit of advice, if you take these out, you can see how well stuck in the other drivers are if you leave her on or try and pull out the front you can leave the back of the tweeter behind and pull it in half be careful push these up from behind they are really tricky um, very delicate okay so we've got a t25 in there which shouldn't be there that's a wood screw or self tapper so, not right. So, in terms of foam, we've got one giant piece that goes all the way around, and then a piece here and a piece here covering the crossover. Right, so no matter what I do, this tweeter won't come out. Um, and like I say, don't pull them from the front because you'll just tear the front plate off and 
rip all your lead wires off the dome. Um, I've tried levering it um, or jacking it from behind. It's stuck fast. So we're going to have to work with that in there. Um, I can get to the connections at the back. So whilst that will be fiddly, when we put our new cable on, um, I can solder it on, but I'm not prepared to disturb that. Chances are it'll be the same with the other one as well. So like I say, this has been out before, it's been re-glued, so I'm not too sure what's gone on there. So that's our trim adjustment. So we've got a lot of resistors on here, um, which are probably okay. We have a couple of diodes here because there's an LED indicator. If this fuse fails, that comes on. Um, yeah, two big pots there. So we will retain this, but we'll look to solder directly to this. So that's going to be fairly interesting. So there's the crossover in the back there. So we'll get that out. This is all on push fit connections as well. So we'll take all this out and uh, check those components. We're going to replace them, but we'll see what's what. So to just go a bit wobbly, this is the uh, inside of the cabinet. And we've got a brace that runs all the way around, picking up the bottom sides and the top so that's a that's a good thing um, other than that yeah it's just chipboard pretty thick chipboard 18 mil but uh, yeah there you go right so here is our crossover um, I've done a couple of these and yeah all original components so obviously original inductors um, looks like the Woofer inductors are copper, whereas the others are steel, I think. Pretty sure that's the case. Um, old L caps, electrolytics, we got a resistor there, um, one sort of poly there, and also <coughs> on the um, attenuation board here, we've got one cap there as well. Um, I recently rebuilt a load of crossovers for a guy called um, Andrew. And if you're watching Andrew, um, I probably asked you to send these to me. Um, if you still want them rebuilding, then give us a shout. Because obviously we've got all these old resistors on here um, and this cap as well. Might be something you can do yourself, but uh, yeah. So there we go. So what we're going to do in terms of this... Replace all these resistors and this cap, and we'll replace this wiring because this is just steel, um, and then directly solder from this to this. So, yeah, right, anyway, let's um, give this a test up. What I'll do, I'll lift up all the legs and then we'll check all the values. So, in terms of our crossover orders on this, I'm pretty sure we've got a fourth order arrangement on the woofer. Um, second order on the high and low pass part of the mid-range circuit and it looks like yeah, inductor down to ground um, a third order on the tweeter circuit so 18 db on the tweeter 12 and 12 on the mid and 24 on the woofer if that's any different I'll let it's you really know. <laughs> really common when you're taking these off for one of the legs to break off um, I think nine eight or nine times out of ten that happens and it's happened with this one so i might still be able to test it by getting the clip on there but uh yeah it's meant to be a 3.3 these tend to hold up reasonably well so anyway we're replacing it anyway right, okay let's have a look so i'm going to use my little peak meter uh it's just quick 
So we've got a 30 microfarad here. Um, 34.3, so that's over 10% out. We've got a resistor here which should be 8.2. Eight point one three. Um, I don't know the power rating of that. It's wire wound, probably pretty low. Um, here we have another thirty. Thirty five point three. So yeah, we are way above ten percent. Another thirty. Thirty five. So yeah. Uh, 12 microfarad, 14.4, this is a 24, 27.8, um, here we have a 72, <laughs> 92, blimey, <clears throat> and here we have a 7. 7.8 okay so they're all out quite by quite a bit um i do check this i know it's pretty accurate let's have a look at these inductors so we'll have a look at this iron core inductor first which is on the woofer uh 2.34 always like to write those values on the inductors or anyone that comes in later on. 4.44 uh, Okay, and we got three air core inductors. 0 0.78 uh, 0 0.43 And our little one on the tweeter, uh, point one four. <clears throat> right, okay, pretty good. So, we want to replace all of those, so we'll do the same. Yes, yeah, so all the resistors on this are pretty good. Um, that cap, I'm not going to bother testing, it'll fall apart anyway. Uh, 1.5 microfarad so we'll replace that as well um, yeah these all seem good yeah cool obviously new wiring so what I'll do now I'll get back to Peter um, let him know how much it's gonna cost to recap this new wiring um, and get it all back together I need to also um, repair this as well and the other one's quite rusty i'll chuck a picture of the other other one in um, it's dented as well so try and get those out um, let's just dc test our woofer and the mid while we're here uh 7.1 ohm so this is probably an 8 ohm driver yep Eight ohm and our mid range says eight ohms as well. And get me leads to fit six point three. Yeah, okay, cool. Right, catch you on part two. <laughs>